What's up guys, we're back with another educational video and this week we are talking about training to failure because there was a new study published. The first author on it is actually my coach for powerlifting, Zach Robinson. One of his other partners in his company, Data Driven Strength, Josh Pellin, also was on the paper. Well, what's interesting about this study is they used a meta regression and they found some really interesting results and I think people have been misinterpreting them. So let's start with the strength data because it's a little bit more straightforward. And it may be a little bit counterintuitive to what you have come to believe. So what they found was that at a given load, training proximity to failure doesn't appear to matter that much. Why is that? That may seem odd. When you're training to failure or close to failure, you're going to have a lot of intraset fatigue. It appears to be a relatively flat relationship between the proximity from failure and the effects on strength. Now, some people might say, well, then why ever train heavy? Well, you do need to train heavy if you want to get strong because strength expression is a specific skill. And his words were that it appears that at a given load, it matters less how close you get to failure, but it is important to use heavy loads if you want to get strong. Let's say I'm going to do 20 total reps with 500 pounds on squat. Now in a set, I could probably do sets of five that it's like an RPE six to eight. I could do it in four sets and get to 20 total reps, but I'd probably actually be better off doing like 10 sets of two, as weird as that sounds, because I'm not going to have as much velocity loss. And when you lose velocity, you're actually decreasing the amount of force you apply to the bar. So heavy singles, heavy doubles, that sort of thing. You're probably better off backing off on the number of reps you do per set and just do more sets. They found something interesting when it came to hypertrophy, which typically what the recommendations have been is you don't need to train to failure. You just need to get close to failure. What they found with this model is it actually showed the best results with training to failure. And in fact, there seemed to be an inflection point around the RIR1, RIR2, where they started getting be even better results than say RIR3 or 4. Now this has led people to say, see, you should take every single set to failure and anything else is a waste of time. This has not completely changed my opinion on training to failure, but it has shifted it a little bit. So he said he does think it's important to get really close to failure. If you're training to failure on every set, it's gonna be very fatiguing, difficult to recover from, and your subsequent sessions may not be good. Now, him leg extensions, leg curls, things that you can train to failure on every set, but it's not super fatiguing. Whereas when you start getting up into compound movements, training to absolute failure is gonna be much more fatiguing overall. You can get similar or same benefits as training to failure while not training quite to failure. Now, what I will say is I think this data suggests that it probably is important to get close to failure. So Zach said, you know, previously he would tell people, you know, if you want hypertrophy, you know, two, three RIR. Now he's saying, you know, zero to two. Right, so he shifted it a little bit up. I would say I still think if you're doing compound lifts, the vast majority, probably around an RIR of two, maybe one. If you're gonna go really close to failure or to failure on a compound lift, make it your last set of that exercise because then you're not creating a bunch of fatigue on the front end that's gonna negatively impact subsequent sets. And then saving most of your sets where you're training to failure for your isolation exercises. Now I will say, people consistently underestimate their proximity to failure or overestimate, depending on what way you look at it. And people by default simply don't train hard enough. Where you literally cannot do another rep, you probably have no idea what it feels like. So I have done back squats until I've gotten stapled in a rack and had to dump the bar on the rack. I did 530 for a set of nine. And by the end, I was so fatigued that my bar sits a little bit lower on my right side than my left. And the hooks to re-rack the bar were relatively high for me. And people had to run over and help me because I was shaking and about to drop the weight. 
Then I collapsed onto the ground and laid there for about 10 minutes after that set. That's training to failure. And people who say, you know, stopping a few reps short is easy. The first rep of that set felt difficult. By rep five, how far from failure they were, but then the researchers then made them go to absolute failure. What they found is people were off by about five. But when it comes to actually developing a training program, if we're talking about big barbell free weight lifts, I think for the most part, you should probably stay at least one to two reps shy of failure. If you're going to approach failure closer, save it for your last set. On compound machine movements like a hack squat, a leg press, or a squat machine, probably can do more in that like zero to one, two RIR. Uh, and, but again, saving your failure set for your last set. But then on isolation stuff, knock yourself out. It's just not gonna accumulate the same level of overall fatigue. That was the phone conversation I had with Zach. That is someone who competes in powerlifting, coaches powerlifting, and also does the research. I tend to take his opinion with a lot of weight. Overall, I think that's pretty much where my thoughts lie as well. If you want to get strong and get jacked, check out the Biolane Workout Builder. Links in the description. All right, guys, if you liked the video, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you next week.